I recently stumbled across a quote from a doctor who was referring to keto. She said, it's not a fad diet, it's a medical intervention. And I remember thinking to myself, wow, it's about time. Between you and me, I don't remember the last time I was this hesitant or nervous about filming a video. But oddly enough, I'm excited too. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about keto, mental health, and which diet is best for rapid weight loss. And guess what they all have in common? They were recently in the news. I'll be linking everything mentioned in the description box. I'm talking about news articles, research papers, and much more. That way you'll have a chance to read over those, get more information, and even share them if you want. Hello, and welcome to episode seven of this series. Let me explain what's going on here in case you're new or you've only caught a few of my videos. If you've ever watched one of my What I Eat in a Day videos, I include this little segment called Sip and Chat or Snack and Chat. In those videos, I'm basically giving an update on what's going on with me, if anything has changed. Sometimes I'll even do a review. This series is different because it's not about me. I mean, sure, we're gonna hang out and chat just like I do in those videos, but it's gonna be more weight loss related. What's going on in the news? Keto, low carb, new research, those kind of topics. Hopefully motivational, inspirational, or things that will be beneficial to you or someone you care about. Since it's like a sip and chat and I originally was calling it tea with Christy, let me go over what I'm drinking. Yes, there is some tea in here. Hot tea, actually. I got a little bit of a sore throat today or something going on here. I don't think it's illness related. I think it's allergies. But that's not all, folks. I have an Alani New Cherry Slush, which is an energy drink, and an ice water. Yeah, three drinks. Apparently, it's an ADHD thing, and I did discuss it in a previous video. I'll link it for you right here. If you've missed the other six episodes, it's okay. There's a playlist. Make sure you get caught up. A few nights ago, I was scrolling on my phone when an article popped up that caught my attention. It was about the ketogenic diet and research that's currently being done to study its effects on mental health. Of course, I clicked on it immediately. This was not on my radar. Apparently, this is huge news right now. It's been addressed at several different conferences around the world and even recently at the Metabolic Health Summit. In the article, Dr. Ian Campbell, yes, doctor, talks about his experience. And after reading it, I did a deep dive, and his story is quite inspirational. A little bit of his background included the fact that he was diagnosed with bipolar two disorder, and at the time, he wasn't a doctor. He was a professional in a completely different field. It's my understanding that he could never find the right fit so that he would have relief from some of the symptoms, which were debilitating. There was a point in the story where he talks about just feeling hopeless, and he decided that he wasn't going to have mental health issues, all of those symptoms, and be overweight as well. So he went on a ketogenic diet. His goal was strictly weight loss. And then he talks about within just a short time frame, how there was this shift and his bipolar symptoms had decreased. The only thing that was different was his diet. Now, obviously this is a very smart person. Not only did he put two and two together, he started tracking his ketone levels, all of his symptoms, how he felt, his blood glucose numbers, and I'm pretty sure he said that he'd done it for a year. And he saw a pattern between his ketone levels and his mental health. Even though it was there in black and white in front of him, he would tell himself, this can't be right, and then continue to track. That information that he accidentally stumbled upon had such an effect on him 
that he decided to go back to school and get his PhD. He wanted the opportunity to be able to help others and conduct his own clinical research. After earning his degree, it sounds like he got a little bit discouraged. Acquiring the funding for this particular research wasn't gonna be easy. In case you weren't aware, typically keto isn't taken seriously when it comes to the medical community. And Dr. Campbell said it was like he was treated as though he was wacky. In a last ditch effort to get funding for his research, he put together a 45 minute video and released it on social media. And thankfully, it wasn't long before someone stepped forward and wanted to help. As we speak, there are about a dozen clinical trials taking place, researching the effects that keto might have on so many different mental health issues that people suffer from. Depression, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, even conditions like PTSD, anorexia, and alcoholism. Let me remind you about this. Keto was first introduced over a hundred years ago. In a medical setting, doctors were using the keto diet on children with epilepsy to help control their symptoms like seizures, and it worked. So it makes you wonder why more research hasn't been done on the effects, the benefits, the possibilities that keto could hold. This is such an exciting time. I can't wait to see the outcome of this research. And I'm just hoping that everyone, from doctors to people like you and me, keep an open mind. After reading numerous articles and watching several YouTube videos on keto and mental health, I started thinking, if I missed this information, what else could have possibly slipped right by that I didn't notice? I went straight up to the search bar and typed keto in the news. I was overwhelmed by everything that came up. I could probably do an entire series called keto in the news, and I would never run out of things to talk about. There's an idea. What do y'all think about a second series? I'm sure it could get very interesting. I digress, back on topic. So as I'm scrolling through the headlines, one, grab my attention immediately. So that I get none of the wording incorrect, I'm gonna read it directly from the site. Mediterranean diet versus very low calorie ketogenic diet. Effects of reaching 5% body weight loss on body composition in subjects with overweight and with obesity. If you're like me, and this is what you just heard, it's okay because I'm going to link the study down in the description box for you. That way you can just click on it and you can go check it out yourself. And I highly encourage you to do it because I'm not a doctor, a healthcare professional, a researcher, a scientist. There is so much in that study. I'm not going to be able to go over it all right now. I'm going to go over the parts that interested me the most. I'll be paraphrasing and making it as simple as possible. In the study, they were testing two diets, the Mediterranean diet versus a very low calorie ketogenic diet. The goal was to find out which one of these diets would allow someone to lose weight the quickest. Yeah, they actually did a study. Why are more people not talking about this? When I needed to lose weight, this was what I wanted to know in the first place. The researchers took two groups and put them head to head, one against another, to see which one would win. This study aimed to evaluate the time these two diets took to reach a loss of 5% of the initial body weight and how body composition was affected. In other words, in a showdown between keto versus Mediterranean, which one is the answer you've been searching for? And it's gonna allow you to lose 5% of your body weight in record time. In total, there were 374 participants. 268 of those completed the study. 133 people did Mediterranean, while 135 did a very low calorie ketogenic diet. The average age of both groups was 45 years old, and it did include both men and women. Now, are you ready for those results? At the one month check-in, the participants that were doing keto had already lost an average 
of 7.21% of their total body weight. They definitely exceeded that 5% goal. The participants that were on the Mediterranean diet did not reach the 5% goal at the one month mark. It actually took them three whole months. Now, there is a little bit of a catch. At the three month mark, they'd lost 7.68% of their body weight. Those on the Mediterranean diet did end up losing just a fraction more than those that were following a very low calorie ketogenic diet. We're talking tiny amount. But that wasn't what the study was focusing on. They wanted to know which one would win in a race. A race to lose weight the fastest. And the clear winner was keto. From personal experience, when the weight comes off slowly, I have a tendency to lose interest, to stray, to eat that piece of cake. But when it happens so fast, it gives you that confidence, that boost you need to stay the course and not fall off plan. There's no better incentive to stick with a new lifestyle change than a rapid weight loss, especially if your goal is to lose weight. Both of the diets are going to get you to the same place. It's just that one's going to get you there a little sooner than the other. I'm not saying that keto is better than the Mediterranean diet or vice versa. All I'm saying is pinpoint your goal and find what works for you. But we're all different, so just keep that in mind. Lately, I've been hearing a lot about a combination of Mediterranean keto. That sounds like a win-win to me. Ooh, one really quick disclaimer, because I know there's going to be some naysayers. Somebody is going to say, but you need to take it off slowly. Slow and steady wins the race, and you're more likely to keep the weight off. There's actually research that suggests that's a myth. I'm living proof that you can take the weight off fast and keep it off. My first month alone doing keto, I lost 21 pounds. Within just a few short months, I lost all the weight, which was over 70 pounds, and I have maintained my weight loss for five years now. Like I said, this was a really in-depth study, and it'll be linked down in the description box if you want to go read over it. I'm going to put so many links down there that I'm going to keep you busy for a while checking out all the new keto in the news. Before you go, remember, jump down to the comments and let me know, are you interested in this becoming a series? Or should I just add it into this? Have you seen anything interesting that's came out recently that I need to know about? This stuff is just fascinating. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Go check the other episodes if you've missed them. And if you've not subscribed yet, I'd love to have you over here as a part of my YouTube family. I hope you're having an amazing day. And just in case nobody's told you today, you've got this and I love you. Bye.